Hey guys, let's get right into it. So we're going to start off with Jennifer and because guys, I don't know why I keep on trying to call this girl Vinegar. I have to like literally think of her name before I say it because I just want to call her Vinegar. Anyway, Vinegar and <laughs> Vinegar. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jennifer and Jimmy Neutron, Nikki. Jennifer and Jimmy Neutron are hanging out the next day. Like she didn't assault him with her drink and her fries the night before. So they're just hanging out like everything is okay. And there wasn't much that happened with them in this episode. We just saw them hanging out and Jimmy Neutron trying his best to get into her panties, but she's really taking it slow. It, I don't know, like I know that this is a relationship of convenience, but it seems like Jennifer, what I said the name, Jennifer really wants this to work out. I think she not only wants to get to the U.S., but I think she wants to get to the U.S. for her child. And if Jimmy Neutron is a nice enough guy who will respect her and somebody that she can have control over, I think that she will go all the way with this. Like, this is a really good trick for her. You know what I mean? And I think that she's just trying to see. Like, she can probably make herself have sex with him and, you know, give him what he wants. But she also wants to see if this is going to be a good environment for her child. So she's a great mom. <laughs> she's a great mom. Listen, if you can't, not, not everybody can go to a nine to five job in grad school and, you know, all these technical trade schools. Some people, their best skill is in their vagina. Okay, it is what it is. There is not many of us who have a great work ethic, great education, and great coochie i happen to be one of them but i know that the pickings are slim so avery and omar i still stand by my thoughts that omar is trying to get out of this marriage guys i don't think that omar is trying to make it work i think that he is infatuated with avery i do however think that he knows that marrying Avery is going to be a huge task that he does not want to take on. He knows that her mother is going to be a headache that he just does not want. Because here we have Avery and Omar just hanging out in her room, you know, just being really cute. They were being so cute, like writing in Arabic. <laughs> cute. Here she comes in. Guys, can we just wrap it up? Because I want to go to bed. And they're like, it's seven o'clock. You know, I don't know what time it is over there, but it just does not seem that it's that late. So Omar, who's annoyed, leaves, and then Avery and her mother get into it, right? But this is the thing with the mom. The mom is just like, oh my goodness, how do you not know that he probably wants you for citizenship? He's taking advantage of you because you're an American woman and you're going to marry him tomorrow. I don't know if it's because reality is setting in that her daughter is going to get married to a foreign guy in a foreign country and she may not ever see her child again. I don't know if that's what's going on with her, but all of a sudden she's opposing this marriage. And I'm like, mom, you had several windows to sabotage this wedding. Why are you waiting after you set everything up, after you saved so many potholes that Omar dug himself? After you covered the potholes, saved the day, made sure everything was in order for this wedding to happen, why now? Why now are you trying to sabotage it? You had so many windows to get out of this situation, to get your child out of this situation. Now, all of a sudden, you're trying to undo everything that you did or that you helped save? It's not making sense to me. It is not making sense to me. I don't know if the producers told her to do the, like, I don't know what happened, but she did like such a 180. Because when I was watching previous episodes, I was like, why are you helping? Why, what are you doing? Why are you buying a wedding dress? You didn't have to buy your daughter's wedding dress, especially if you didn't agree. You could be like, I don't have it. I got all these kids back home in America. You know, I don't have it, Avery. Why did you buy the wedding dress? Why did you help them secure a rabbi? Why did you even set such a low dowry? You saw that Omar freaked out when you said 10,000. You should have said 10,000 and stood there. And then they're like, well, you can't afford the dowry so you can't marry my daughter. Let me tell you something, you and Omar would have been relieved. I don't get this mom. Honestly, maybe it's just the fact that she realizes that this wedding is happening. Maybe she's just freaking out, maybe that's it. But I don't know why she helped save it when this wedding was falling apart so many times, she came in and saved the day. Ah, uh, you know what? Maybe it's because I'm not a mom and I don't understand, you know what I mean? Because it just seems like as a parent, even if your child is doing the wrong thing, you wanna be there to support them, you know what I mean? Maybe that's what it is. She knows her daughter's making a bad decision, but 
she wants to help this poor decision go off smoothly you know maybe that's what it is maybe she just loves her child and she just wants her to have a beautiful wedding even if she thinks she's making a bad decision maybe that's it parents mamas especially talk to me what's going on with avery's mama i need to, i i don't understand and i think it's because i'm not a parent especially a mom maybe that's why i'm not getting it but what's going on here what what's up with her 180 Let's talk about it in the comments section. Darcy and Tom, can we talk about how Darcy, Cubano Darcy, how her black ancestors will not let her roots rest? <laughs> I don't care how hard, how long Darcy presses them roots out. Her black ancestors be fighting through them roots. They just like, you're not going to deny us, girl. We here. We here. I'm telling you. Darcy could press that hair one minute and the next minute is this. <laughs> It is this in them roots. I was looking at her hair and I was like, Darcy, your roots will never match this straight weave that you keep on putting in your head. Sis, you need to go kinky. You just need to go kinky. You don't need to go full straight. There is like a kinky, um, what is it? A textured kind of straight hair that you can buy that will match them roots. Cause baby, baby, Harriet Tubman is pushing through them roots. So Darcy and Tom go to meet her twin sister and her Albanian boyfriend at this restaurant in Albania. Now, starting off, Tom is already annoyed because he had a trip planned for Darcy, but canceled it to go to Albania and be with Darcy's twin sister and her boyfriend. And he didn't even want to go there. I think he was talking some junk about Albania too, wasn't he? Anyway, they've been traveling all day. Tom don't feel like being at this dinner because he's tired. He's like, I've been up since 5 a.m. and I've been traveling. I would much rather go to the hotel and get something to eat and conk out and meet with them the next day. But Darcy is very adamant that they all meet up for dinner. So they get there. Her sister and her boo show up 40 minutes later and they didn't even eat. I get, listen guys, I totally understand not eating until your guests arrive and also not eat not eating not eating your food until everybody has their food but if you've been up since 5 a.m traveling all damn day you are starved you get to the restaurant at the time that they said meet them and they are not there why the hell are you waiting 40 minutes to eat let me tell you something after the first 15 let me tell you something i will give you 15 minutes and by that time i've already eaten the bread if it's available but that's it after that, I'm getting my full course meal. By the time you show up, I'm eating my dessert. It is not a game. So Darcy's twin sister and her boyfriend show up 40 minutes late. Tom is annoyed. He don't really feel like it. Darcy is uncomfortable and just like, oh, it's okay, babe. It's okay, babe. No, you should have checked your sister. Here's why I feel like she should have checked her sister. Because her sister never responded to any of her text messages. Like, what are you doing? You know that I'm really into this guy. I want you to meet him. You're not letting me know that something is up because if I keep on texting you, there's obviously an issue and for her not to respond and her and the dude show up late, like nothing happened. Even when, even when Tom made a comment about it, they started laughing and I'm like, this isn't funny. Nobody even apologized. Like they just showed up and was like, Hey, what's up? And you know, started ordering food and drinks. And I'm like, there's no acknowledgement of the fact that you had somebody waiting 40 minutes for you and you didn't send them any kind of message to let them know what was going on. You set the time, you picked the restaurant, you picked the freaking country because they were going somewhere else. That was just rude. I was team Tom on this one. Team Tom on this one. They were rude, they were not remorseful and they did not care. Now, let's talk about this Albanian stud in the pictures, okay? Because this show for two years now has been showing us pictures of Darcy's boyfriend. I'm not saying that he didn't look like the pictures. I'm just saying, I feel like we were getting enhanced pictures because when this dude showed up, I was like, who the hell is he? He looked like Dolph London, you know, the blonde dude that used to fight Rambo, Rocky and all the movies. He looked like him with a touch of zombie because he was a little sunken and like the eyes and the cheek. I was like, this is not the same guy. And then when he opened up his mouth, who in the hell knew that he was going to sound like Pinocchio? I wasn't ready. I was like, he sound like Pinocchio. I wasn't ready. I was not ready. The next day, they go to like a bridge, a beautiful place to like propose. And Darcy's sister is trying to talk to Tom to see 
where he's at because obviously her sister wants to marry him today. And she did come off to me as a concerned sister, but I guess because they're twins and they have like this weird competitive relationship, Darcy was reading way too deeply into it. Like Darcy is very sensitive. She gets her feelings hurt so quickly and She's even more sensitive after you know all of her issues with Jesse because in the beginning I felt like when she was dating Jesse she was taking shots you know what I mean and she was healing and she was able to not read too deeply into like his insults or his little jabs or his you know controlling behavior I think now she's just very triggered so every little thing just sets her off because her sister is like you know do what sisters do asking Tom talking to Tom asking him about his intentions and Darcy does see that Tom is getting a bit frustrated but she takes that on and then like she starts getting into it in front of the men in front of Tom with her sister and it's just making Tom uncomfortable finally she recognizes it and then she starts crying and I'm like Darcy you continue to look unstable to not just Tom, to the viewing audience. And sis, it's not, you need help. You need help. I'm not saying that she's like not all there, right? But Darcy has some emotional trauma, not only from her relationship with Jesse. I think she also has some emotional trauma from her marriage. She got to work through these things before she jumps into a relationship. Because I feel like she tries to heal herself through men. And Gucci and weaves, and she needs to find another way. Retail therapy does help. I'm a living witness. But you also need to go into a therapist's office and really, you know, regurgitate that stuff that you've been holding with you. Because, sis, there are some serious, pro visible problems that you have. You are way too triggered, way too triggered, way too sensitive. You read too deeply into things and then you're not reading the signs that men are giving you correctly. You got a lot of work that needs to be done. I think you need to be single, but I feel like for Darcy, if she's single, then she misses out on a check on this show. So I understand her coming to this show. My problem is, I don't think that Darcy is using this as an opportunity like Tom is. I think she is really into this dude. I think she really just gets involved way too deeply. And not only am I concerned for her, I'm concerned for her daughters because she's their role model. They're gonna mirror their mother's relationships because she's taught them about relationships. She's taught them how to be in relationships with men. And if she's teaching them anything that we're seeing from her, the girls are in danger. Darcy, miss a couple seasons of this show. We'll accept you when you come back because you are good TV. So let's talk about Michael and his abuser. We meet Michael and Angela after she has assaulted him. Now she's at her hotel room throwing his stuff out. Michael, who slept in a car, I don't think, to be quite honest with you guys, I don't think that he actually slept in the car in the parking lot. I think the producer staged this to show us the dramatics of this relationship and how extreme Angela is being. How extremely wrong she's being. Because she keeps on talking about that she's mad that Michael lied to her about going to the docks because he was on the docks with other women and she saw the picture. The picture that they keep on showing. The woman is in the background. Doesn't even look like she knows Michael. She's hugged up with another man. How did Angela even get to the conclusion that she was with him? I'm like, you are reaching for an issue. She's a self-sabotager because she's looking for an issue where there is not one. Michael is continuing to endure this verbal and physical abuse and mental abuse from Angela because he wants to get to the United States. So she's done with him. He tries to talk to her. She's at a bar. He's trying to sweet talk his girl. She starts assaulting him again. He gets upset. She walks away. And she runs off to her hair salon to get her hair braided. While she's getting her hair braided, the shop owner is trying to like give Angela some wisdom. You know what I mean? Like she's trying to like talk to this woman. And I feel like she was put up to it by the producers as well because I just don't think that Angela and all her unruliness in this salon, that this lady will spend time talking to her. I think they would probably, I think they would probably give her a service, a quick service to get her out of their place because she's such a nightmare. She's such a nightmare. So the lady is talking to her. Michael comes in because he, because he knows the way to get to Angela's heart is through Kate. 
So he brings her a cake. Angela jumps up and she's just like, I don't want him in here. I'm going to leave. And I will say this. Let me tell you something about that shop owner. She kicked Michael out of that hair salon with the quickness because when Angela jumped up and was like, I will leave, she was like, oh, hell no. I'm getting my money from this American nut job. <laughs> she was like, uh-uh, please leave. Please leave. She got Michael out of there and they finished whatever they were doing to Angela's hair. Because <laughs> that toddler hairstyle that they gave Angela, girl. <laughs> Anyway, so after her hair is done, Angela goes out to get in the car, like a walk back to the hotel, and Michael is there with a the cake. This bully unwraps the cake, smashes it in his face, and walks away. And you know what, Michael? At this point, bro, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Do you really need the citizenship this bad? Like, I get that she's taking care of you, but dude, you can, you're can you on TV now. You can probably scam another American woman into supporting you while you are in Nigeria or to get you to the U.S. if that's what you really want. Because he mentions it, right? He realizes that he's upset Angela and he's gotten her so mad to the point where he doesn't see her coming back. Because Michael says this in his confessional. He's just like, oh, I messed up. I really messed up and Angela's really mad at me, so... I guess I'm not going to the U.S. now. I was like, brother, you got to stop revealing your scam because the fact that you just said that that nut job is going to watch this back and probably beat you up at the reunion, cancel any plans that she had of bringing you here to the U.S. It's just like, you got to stop telling people what your scam is because you're not mad that the woman is mad at you. You're mad that she's so mad at you that you think you're not getting to the U.S. As soon as he said that, I was like, ah, dude, you just blew your scam. I don't think you're getting here by way of Angela now. And you know what, dude? Good for you. Because I feel like if Angela gets Michael here, I mean, if she's not assaulting his penis, she's going to be beating him up in the face whenever he does something that she does not like. And dude, you don't need it like that. There is nothing in your life that you need that bad to suffer that kind of abuse from Donald Trump in a sundress. Bro, you can do better. So much better. So Rebecca and Zied are at this outdoor market, like shopping for like foods and spices to take to his sister's home because they're going to make dinner. And Rebecca is going to meet with uh, Zied's sister to see if she can get her approval. But what I really want to talk about is how trifling Angela was at the outdoor market. Like they're looking at all of this stuff and Zied is showing her the outdoor market. She picks up like a dried apricot with her dirty American hands, okay? We don't know what you bringing over here to Tunisia. She picks up this dried apricot, smells it, brings it to her nose, smells it, puts her hot breath on it. Baby, what is this? And then puts it back down. And, and then she starts doing this throughout the entire market. I was just like, well, you got to burn the whole market down at this point. Because Rebecca is just putting her hands in it, exploring everything, and just being all kinds of trifling. People like Rebecca is the reason why I no longer eat grapes. I have not had a grape since 2017, guys. Here is why. I went to the market to purchase my favorite grapes, these cotton candy grapes. I know you guys have all had them. I know they're probably made in the lab, but they're delicious, right? So my market contacted me and let me know that they're in stock there and I got to get there soon because I'm on a list. I'm on the cotton candy grape list. So whenever they are in stock, my market always texts me or calls me or shoots me an email to let me know that they're in stock and how much they have and that I better get there right away. So I'm like rushing to get to my local market. I get to my local market and I make a beeline for my grapes. While I'm there, this old woman is opening the grapes, digging her hand in the grapes, eating like a handful of them, wiping her nose and putting her hand back in the grapes. That was it for me. I let the manager know he didn't do anything because I told, I showed him all the bags that she had put her hands in, especially the hand that she wiped her nose. Guys, not only did she wipe her nose, and put her hand back in the grape. Every time she wiped her nose and got a little something, she wiped it on her behind and used that same hand to go in and take some grape. That was the last year I had a grape. I left that market and I did not look back. So unless the food has a shell or a package, I get it from the back. I always go to the back of the market in the stock room and I wait outside the door until somebody can bring me a fresh bag of cherries. I don't eat nothing on display, nuh-uh. I learned from that woman. And I do the same thing with Whole Foods. The last time I ate from the hot or cold bar 
at Whole Foods was I think 2017 as well. I felt like I was just getting exposed. God was just waking me up to all the unsanitary mess that happens at my markets. I was at Whole Foods getting my favorite chicken tortilla soup. Let me tell you something. I saw this dude, dude look like money. He opened up a bag of freaking nachos, right? To eating out of the nachos. Didn't even look like he was going to buy them because the nachos were still in the display section. He had just opened them and was reaching into the nachos that was still in the display section. And he was dipping his nachos in the soup. Eat it. Dip it in the sauce. Eat And nobody stopped him. He was just dipping and dabbing all over the place. And I was just like... Yeah, so that's it for me in this chicken tortilla soup. Girl, I went home and taught myself how to make that soup and I never looked so back. I said all that to say, Rebecca is trifling and she don't need to ever be let back into Tanisha. <laughs> so Rebecca and Ziad go to meet with her sister for dinner. And guys, listen, I know that I have viewers all over the world. Ziad's sister was, I don't know, what was it? It was like this orange pot with like a long neck. And it like, it was like a long neck, but it came down and had like, and it swooped out, right? It was like one of them wine um, catheters. Is that what they call it? You can tell I don't drink, but it was orange. It looked like it was made out of like a, a like a clay. And it came down like this. And I knew if she lift the top, it would be like rice or something what in there. What is that called? Because I've seen it at my local Sir La Table and I've been wanting to purchase it because I just love the look of it. And I know that it makes a delicious dish. I just don't know what the name of it is. I don't know what the dish is and I probably don't know how to make the dish. So if you guys know what that orange clay pot with the long neck that, you know, buckles out at the sides, if you guys know what that is, please let me know what the name of it is, what food is being made in that pot and where can I find the recipe? Because I wanna purchase that pot, but I don't know what I would, make you know make within that pot please let me know and if it's still at my local sir La table i'll actually purchase it and make a dish from your suggestions so let us sister know in the comment section below so anyway they're at her place and the sister is not feeling rebecca i love ziad's family i really really do because this is obviously a family who would benefit from having an american in their family who has some sort of money because you can tell that the family is in need of some financial assistance but they ain't about that life they love ziad and they don't want to sell him to this white r kelly the family is not on board with rebecca and i love the fact that her being american and her having some sort of money is not phasing this family because the sister was not here for it she was just like what do you want with my brother this old woman from america what are you trying to do to my brother, what do you want from and him? And then this family has already discussed that Ziad is not the first Tunisian man or the first foreign man that she has been with. So they're already on edge with her, like the sister. The sister will be direct. The parents will be nice to you and then behind your back or when the door is closed or when they're in their confessional or when they're talking to their son, tell you the truth. She's not for you. She's not for this family. We are not okay with it. But the sister, the shady sister, let Rebecca know to her face, I'm not with this. Like, what are you doing? Even with her body language, she was letting Rebecca know what she thought of her. Because let me tell you something. Ziad already informed Rebecca that his sister knows, like, she can understand English and she speaks English. And we saw her do that with Rebecca. But then she just had moments where she iced her out. I was like, sisters can be so petty. <laughs> Lord, I pray for any dude that I introduce to my sisters. My God, today, they are sweethearts, but they will be petty when need be, okay? So Rebecca's over here, thank you for inviting me. This food looks so delicious. And the sister's just like, ma'am, even if you didn't understand her, you heard her say something. <laughs> she did not even look over to Rebecca. She just kept on flipping that bread. What the hell was that bread, guys? Let me know what this meal is because I was watching this scene. I couldn't even focus on what was going on because I was looking at all this food like this looks delicious. I don't know what that pasta and meat dish that she made and my little pot that I love, that bread that she was frying. I could smell the I just wanted to have one bite of that bread. Just 
one bite. <laughs> it looks so good. Guys, what is this dish? What is it? Please let a sister know because I'm making that. I am making that. So now let's talk about how Rebecca consistently gets on my nerves. So it's the next day. Rebecca and Ziad are just hanging out. Ziad is trying to enjoy his rich white American woman and Rebecca keeps on messing it up. And it just feels so forced and fake to me. I can't get behind it. So they're having a good day drinking some kind of drink that just look fresh. You know what? I, where is he at from? Tunisia, right? I gotta go. I gotta go because just, just the food alone has convinced me that I need to travel to this place soon and very soon. I should do a 90 day fiance food travel trip. You know what? TLC, let's talk. Cause that would, that would be a hit. We would have so much fun and eat so much food. We would stop by Akimi's neighborhood and eat that seasoned fish that uh, Pastor Benjamin was trying to eat but couldn't because of the spices. We'll go to uh, Ziyed's uh, hometown and just eat everything. I was going to say Korea with Jihoon, but not the places that Jihoon went to. I would like to do some Korean street food because I follow a Korean, I'm subscribed to a Korean street food channel here on YouTube, baby. The stuff they be making. I'm like, I gotta get there. I gotta get there. Yeah. Let's do it, TLC. A 90 day fiance travel food trip. Let's do it. So anyway, they're having a good time. Debbie Downer, also known as White R. Kelly, also known as Rebecca, decides that she has to tell Ziad another secret about herself. Another random unnecessary secret. So she looks at him in this medium jacket and she's just like, I have something to tell you. I was in a relationship with a woman many years ago. I just had a bad relationship with a man and I tried this relationship with a woman but it didn't work out because I didn't like it. I didn't want, I no longer wanted to be in a relationship with a woman. Don't judge me. Don't look at me any different. And Zianna's over here with his hookah like, oh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? First of all, it happened so long ago and you realize that you're not a lesbian, that you're not bisexual. So why do you have to tell him this? It doesn't matter. Even Ziad said in his confessional, it happened before me. I feel like she's just trying to cause drama, guys. She's trying to cause drama where there isn't any. And I don't know if she's doing this for the show or if she is just a drama girl. And if she's a drama girl, Ziad, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. She is going to be hell for you in the States, bro. Because you can't go nowhere. You're going to be dependent on this woman and all her drama. Rebecca, none of this was necessary. None of it. Now you're acting different towards me, Ziad. I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to shut down. Why did you tell him? You wanted this drama. That's why you told him. Oof. Ziad, there has to be another American white woman that you can scam. Rebecca can't be the cream of the crop. I just thought about it. Ziad wears these medium clothes and he presses his head to the point where it looked like he got waterfalls. Maybe this is all he could get. <laughs> Benjamin and Akini. Um, Akini's brother is annoying and he gives me scammer. Like he is just making everything difficult for no reason whatsoever. So we finally get to hear what Akini's brother said to Akini about Benjamin and it's that he was a great disappointment or something to the father or that she disappointed their father because he didn't show up. This is my problem with Akini's brother. One, that he said that to her, right? Two, he acted like he didn't say anything because when Benjamin goes to talk to him, he acts crazy like he didn't say those things to Akini to upset her. And then he's like, what did you do? You did something. There's something you're not doing right. You have to make improvements. I'm like, dude, you're scamming. And now I want to pass the Benjamin side because I'm just like, you don't got to go through this. You don't got to jump through hoops to get this woman. If they're going to make it difficult for you to be with her, get out. Get out because this brother is a problem. He is causing drama where there isn't any. And then Akini is, I don't know. Akini and her brother are getting on my nerves because Akini is acting very dramatic. No, Benjamin. No, don't say anything. But you're sitting here.
here crying in the middle of the damn street. He don't know what to do. He came here for you. You're crying and falling apart and then you're telling him not to say anything. Like, what is he supposed... Benjamin, go to your Airbnb and live your best life. Make her chase you because at the end of the day, she trying to get a white American man. Akini wants to get to America and she want to live her best life with a white man. She wants you as much as you want her. You have pursued her. It needs to be the other way around because if you get on that plane, Akini and her brother is going to be chasing after you. Not the father though. I feel like the dad, he, yeah, he, he not for you with her. But Benjamin doesn't have to go through this. Like I'm sick of them at this point. It's just like, why are y'all making it so difficult for no reason? Like, you know what I mean? Like there isn't, there hasn't been an explanation yet for why they're making it so difficult for Benjamin. I feel like they're trolling him at this point. And I just, I want him to go back to America. But you know what? Benjamin wants a black woman and it doesn't seem like he can keep a black American woman. <laughs> so, uh, Benjamin, I don't know what to do. There are black women in Brazil. Where else can Benjamin go? Not London. Them London black women will be like, girl. <laughs> what is it y'all say, bruv? Like, bruv, what the hell are you doing? Get out of here. <laughs> Do you know what I can get? Boy, bye. Um, yeah, he want a black American. Uh, yeah, Benjamin, you might have to work this out with a Keeney. Cause I know what you want, bro. But you gotta get you gotta get a sister that need help. <laughs> you gotta get a sister that need help. Yeah, you gotta stick with a Keeney. But I feel sorry for him. I feel sorry for him because it's not fair. It is not fair how they're treating him. So after this incident. Benjamin not being comfortable now in Akini's brother's house because Akini then told him what he said. So of course the dude doesn't feel comfortable. Now he's trying to talk to Akini to see, like, how can he fix this? The brother is telling him that he's done something wrong. The father didn't show up because of him. He wants to marry Akini. He does not want to leave here without her. She's not communicating with him. So Benjamin is at the point where he's like starting to think that maybe this wouldn't work out because he's just like Akini is not communicating with me properly. You think? She has not been communicating with you properly since you got here. And y'all know that I love Akini. But you are good in 26. You need to learn how to talk to an adult man that you're trying to marry. This man is about to be all up in your guts and you don't know how to talk to him? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't want you to say anything. Girl. <laughs> I was like, what? Speak up. I can't hear you. Why are you acting so childlike? They getting on my nerves. <laughs> let, let me end with this couple on the lighter note. When Pastor Benjamin was singing his hymnals. <laughs> Y'all, it took me a good minute to figure out what song he was singing. And then he got to the chorus and I was like, oh, that's the song. Lord, we do come from a whole different culture because I was like, because I was, I was listening to the song and I was like, these, some of these words sound very familiar, but the melody was different. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. When he got to that point, I said, oh, that's the song. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor Benjamin. Y'all, he was up in them hymnals, okay? He was in that hymnal because it had a little post-it notes. I said, you better go ahead and be saved, Pastor Benjamin. But Akini, still, I feel like you're going to need a safe word with this dude. He gives me freak. Not talking about Caesar. He's a scammer. So that's it for me. I enjoyed this episode. It was some fun moments. It was a lot of little bit of information. I do feel like this was a filler episode because the next episode is going to be really, really juicy. And I will be there to review it. And if you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you, what? What is this one? Before the 90 Days? Sunday for the following episode of Before the 90 Days. Love you guys. Bye.